You don't just agree with what a confused adolescent says. A confused adolescent's freaking out because they don't feel comfortable with puberty. Did you feel comfortable with puberty? Who among us felt comfortable with puberty? The problem is these kids are being told that if you don't feel comfortable with puberty, it's a crisis. These kids are being told that if you don't fit in with other kids or you don't like this or that or whatever, that it's because of being trans and they're getting tons of social incentive for it. Kids who were nerdy, geeky, awkward, bullied, now they're cool, okay? So it is so wildly irresponsible to force these vulnerable children to live with the consequences of this era for the rest of their lives. This is not gonna age well. This is going to look really ugly in retrospect, just like lobotomies and so many other things that we've been embarrassed by in human history. So it's wildly irresponsible to set up the medical system and the mental health care system in a way that kids don't have any option of just meeting with a, a level-headed adult who says, oh, that is so, so tough to feel awkward in your body. Tell me about it, right? You need to be able to talk about it. You need to be able to ask questions. And the laws that are banning quote unquote conversion therapy are not necessary. There, there's nobody is engaging in harmful, abusive tactics to try to make people change things that are unchangeable about themselves. What people are trying to do is they're trying to safeguard children. They're seeing that these are novel medical experiments that are unnecessary and that have high rates of harm and risk and regret that sterilize children, that prevent them from experiencing orgasm. I mean, if you're looking out for the long-term best interest of children, think about what makes for a healthy life. Think about what make think about what makes you want to keep going. It's the ability to feel healthy and to enjoy your favorite activities and to have relationships with your loved ones. Maybe it's playing with your kids. Maybe it's having sex with your partner. These are all things that we're going to take away from children if we go with this whole hormones and puberty blockers thing. We're going to leave them with disabilities. We're going to leave them with the ability, without the ability to reproduce, without the ability to enjoy loving sexual relationships with people. And that's what's going to increase their risk of suicide. You should never tell a kid, you should never tell anyone, but especially not a vulnerable, impressionable kid, that they are going to kill themselves if they don't get what they want. That is not good mental health advice. It's never been our job to tell people that. It's always been our job to say, no matter what happens to you, how people treat you, what kind of opportunities or pitfalls come your way, I believe in your resilience that you can find a way to make your life meaningful and enjoyable. And no matter how shitty other people are to you, no matter what happens in your life, you don't have to kill yourself. And we also have a responsibility to assess suicide risk properly. There are many factors that can make suicide risky or not along a spectrum. And, you know, this kind of carte blanche using of the threat of suicide to push this agenda that's only going to increase suicide risk in the long run is terrible. So here's another thing that really needs to be described. Um, the left hand does not know what the right hand is doing. Um, everyone who hasn't woken up to what's happening yet thinks that kids are actually getting assessed properly and that there's some standard of care being followed there. But what's actually happening is that therapists are either taught in the gender affirming model or they're taught to refer to gender clinics. In either way, if the, if the kid is seeing a therapist who's practicing the affirmation model or they're referred to a gender clinic, the, the starting point is that what the kid is saying about their gender must be true. It's it's never, let's conduct an assessment and figure out what's really going on here and if the kid actually meets the normal clinical picture of gender-related distress that's, you know, severe and persistent and yeah, 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 yeah. Plus kids are being told on the internet what to say about their gender distress anyway to get what they think they want, what's glorified on the internet. So, there is a myth that there's a, a thorough assessment being done. Usually comorbidities are not diagnosed. If they are diagnosed, the way they're framed clinically is that these comorbidities are secondary to gender, that gender is the main problem and that the kid has developed these other problems because of their gender related distress or their bigoted family or fill in the blank. So the standard of care that you might think is happening is not happening. And it's happening because af the affirmation model is the norm and because therapists are afraid of losing their licenses over allegations of conversion therapy. So if you think that there should be any alternative 
for kids who think that they're trans, for kids who think that they're trans, which they could have heard that anywhere. They could have any number of reasons for thinking that. A lot of them are social. Um, and a lot of them are just, they don't have a complete understanding of their own psychology and who would, their, their kids. You know, if you think that these kids should have any alternative besides adults just agreeing with them and then giving them drugs and surgeries that will um, make this permanent for the rest of their lives, then then you, you cannot enact these conversion therapy laws. You have to leave it safe for therapists to explore this without fearing losing their license. Few therapists will take the risks that I've taken. If every therapist who worried about this took the same risks that I'd taken, then our laws in the US would be different. We would have changed this by now, but there are so many families that cannot find appropriate therapy for their kids because every therapist is just gonna do nothing but affirm. It's really disastrous for mental health. And just think about the blood on your hands, that the, the incredible amount of guilt and remorse and regret that you will feel as an adult if you participate in something that turns out to be what it looks like this might turn out to be, what time will tell. If you listen to stories of detransitioners now and how they feel mutilated and how they feel betrayed, by the adults who are supposed to protect them, Ex you know, magnify that. Imagine that all the kids who are transing now at the age of 15 are going to feel that way at 25. How are you going to feel about the role that you played in that? You know, I as a therapist feel that I have a responsibility to maintain some credibility in my profession because the people who are going to need the most therapy are the ones who have been scarred by gender therapists. So we have to keep options open for people who will desist and detransition, for people who want alternatives, for parents who feel that they've been lied to and mischaracterized. 